Welcome back to our channel Commerce Easy Knots. Today we are going to deal with winding up of a company. The winding up of a company means it is the last stage of the life of a company. It is a process whereby the assets of the company and the liabilities of the companies are sold and paid and if the surplus is distributed to the shareholders according to their rights. The shareholders are also known as contributories of the company. For the winding up of a company, a liquidator is appointed. He takes over the control of the company from the board. Next is the types of winding up. The winding up is divided into two. Winding up by tribunal. The second one is winding up by voluntary. The winding up of voluntary is again divided into creditors winding up and members winding up. In this video, we are only discussing about the winding up of a company by tribunal. So this is a lengthy video, but I am including only short notes about winding up of a company by tribunal. So try to watch this video in full. Winding up by tribunal. It is also known as the compulsory winding up of a company. Next is a company can wound up under the following cases first one is special resolution of the company if a company has special resolution by the court the company wants to wound up second one is default if the company makes defaults in the statutory reports and financial statements of the company the company must wound up third one is not commencing or suspending the company if the company does not commence the business within a year from its incorporation or suspends its business for a whole year, the company want to wind up. Next is reduction of members. If the number of members falls below 7 in case of public company or below 2 in case of private company, a company must wound up. Next one is inability to pay debts. If the company is unable to pay off its debts, the company must wound up. The last one is the just and equitable close. If the court is of opinion that it is just and equitable that the company should be wound up. Next is petition for winding up. A petition for winding up can be given by the following persons. Company, creditors, shareholders or contributories, contingent or prospective creditors, registrar, liquidators and the person authorized on behalf of the state or central government. This is mentioned under the section 272. Next is the powers of the tribunal. It is mentioned under the section 273. When a tribunal gets a petition from the persons who are entitled, the tribunal should make an order within 90 days from the date of presentation of the petition under section 272. Section 272 means the petition for winding up. Next is the orders are as follows. If the tribunal gets the petition, the tribunal makes orders in this manner. First one is dismiss it with or without cost. That means the tribunal can dismiss the petition. Second one make any interim order as it thinks fit. Next is appoint a provisional liquidator of the company till the making of a winding up order. The tribunal can appoint a provisional liquidator. Next is make an order for the winding up of the company with or without cost or any other order as it thinks fit. Next is the statement of affairs. After making order by the tribunal, the liquidator must submit statement of affairs. For that, what is a statement of affairs? A statement of affairs or SOA is document detailing a company's assets and the liability. Generally, it is prepared by the liquidator or appointed professional during certain insolvency proceedings or at the time of winding up. Next is how to file a statement of affairs. The following procedures are followed for filing the statement of affairs. In special situations, the tribunal allows 30 days of period to file the SOA. If the company fails to file the statement of affairs, the company can't oppose the petition 
or the company can't withdraw the petition and the directors and officers of the company is responsible for this liability and they are punished next procedure is the liquidator want to audit all the books of accounts of the company even if the tribunal gives 30 days for filing the statement of affairs next if any defaults happens the director or the officers shall be punishable with imprisonment which may extend to 6 months and a fine which not less than 20,000 rupees and which may extend to 5 lakh rupees. Next is who are company liquidators? In law, a liquidator is the officer appointed by the tribunal when a company goes into winding up or liquidation. He has the responsibility to collect all the assets of the company and settling all the liabilities against the company before putting the company into dissolution or winding up. Next is how to appoint a liquidator. The liquidator is appointed from a panel of persons. It is maintained by the central government. The panel consisting of chartered accountants, advocates, company secretaries, coast accountants as may be prescribed and having at least 10 years of experience in company matters. The tribunal may limit and restrict the powers of the tribunal by the order appointing him or it or by a subsequent order but otherwise he shall have the same powers as a liquidator. The tribunal can point out the powers to be facilitated by the liquidator or else the liquidator can have the same power as a liquidator. Next is the central government may remove the name of any person or firm or body corporate from the panel of the grounds of misconduct, fraud, misfeasance, breach of duties or professional incompetence. It is mentioned in the section 276. Next is the fee payable to the liquidator is specified by the tribunal on the basis of the task required to be performed by the liquidator or his experience or his qualifications and based on the size of the company. Next, the liquidator should want to file a declaration within 7 days from the date of appointment disclosing if any conflicts of interest with the company to the tribunal and such obligation shall continue throughout the term of his appointment. Next is intimation to liquidator and registrar. It is mentioned in the section 277 subsection 1. The tribunal want to send an intimation of appointing a liquidator within 7 days to the liquidator and also to the registrar of the companies. The registrar should make an endorsement about this appointment in his records and should want to notify this appointment in the official gazette in the case of listed company. Next is termination of employees. It is mentioned in the section 277 subsection 3. When the tribunal issued winding up of a company, it automatically discharges the officers, employees, directors and workmen of the company. But the business always continues by the control of the liquidators. Next is winding up committee. The liquidator gives an application to the tribunal for constituting a committee. The committee is called a winding up committee. It should be within three weeks of passing winding up order. The main aim for constituting a committee is for assisting the liquidator. Next, the members includes in the winding up committees are an official liquidator, a nominee of the secured creditors and a professional and a professional nominated by the tribunal. The functions of winding up committees are taking over the assets of the company, examining the statement of affairs of the company, 
recovery of property cash or any other assets of the company reviewing of audit reports and accounts of the company sale of assets finalizing the list of creditors and contributories of the company compromise abandonment and settlement of claims payment of dividends if any and any other function as the tribunal may direct from time to time next is a report of the company liquidator it is mentioned under the section 281 the report and the minutes of the meeting of the committee should be placed before the tribunal should be placed to the tribunal on monthly basis it should be signed by all the members present in that meeting if the tribunal made winding up order the liquidator want to submit that prepared report within 60 days including the following particulars the report should include the nature and details of the assets of the company the amount of capital issued subscribed and paid up the existing and contingent liabilities of the company the debts due to the company and if any guarantees extended by the company list of contributories dues payable by them and details of any unpaid call details of trademark and intellectual properties of the company details of subsisting contracts joint ventures and collaborations and the details of holding and subsidiary companies details of legal cases involved by the company any other information which the tribunal may direct or the company liquidator may consider necessary to include next is tribunal actions on the report it is mentioned under the section 282 if the company submits the report to the tribunal sometimes the tribunal may take actions actions are sometimes like that on consideration of the report of the company the liquidator fix a time limit for the dissolution next is the tribunal may order sale of the company as a going concern or its assets or part if any fraud happens by the creditors or contributories of the company the company direct the liquidator to file a criminal complaint against the persons who were involved in the commission of fraud and the tribunal takes necessary steps to protect and preserve the value of the assets of the company next is custody of company's properties it is mentioned under the section 283 all the property of the company shall be deemed to be in the custody of the tribunal from the date of the order for the winding up of the company from the winding up of the company order takes place the company's all assets or all properties are under the custody of the tribunal next is statement of list of contributories and application of assets it is mentioned in the section 285 after all these procedures the tribunal makes a list of contributories of the company if any rectification needs the asset of the company is applied to applied to discharge of that liabilities while settling the list of contributories the following conditions are to be taken care a person who has been a member shall not be liable to contribute if he has ceased to be a member for the preceding one year or more before the commencement of the winding up that means if a person is not a member of a company before the winding up of the company or preceding one year he shall not be liable to contribute to the company yes, if a person who has been a member shall not be liable to contribute if a person is a member of that company but he is not liable to contribute it is in respect of the company contracted after he ceased to be a member next is no person who has been a member shall be liable to contribute that means if a person is not a member of the company 
he shall be not liable to contribute unless it appears to the tribunal that the present members are unable to satisfy the contributions required to be made by them in persons of this act next is in the case of a company limited by shares no contribution shall be required from any person and the last one is in the case of a company limited by guarantee no contribution shall be required next is the obligation of directors and managers it is under the section 286 sometimes the directors and managers are the contributories of the company in the case of a limited company the director or manager whose liability is un whose liability is unlimited in addition to his liability he want to contribute as an ordinary member next is advisory committee it is mentioned under the section 287 the tribunal may while passing an order of winding up of a company direct the liquidator to constitute an advisory committee constituted for advising the company liquidator and to report to the tribunal an advisory committee consists of not more than 12 members of the company the members includes the creditors and contributors of the company next the liquidator should convene a meeting within 30 days from the date of order of winding up this meeting is convened to determine the members for the advisory committee in that meeting the liquidator together with the tribunal selects the 12 members for the advisory committee next is the advisory committee have the right to inspect all the books of accounts documents assets and properties of the company under the liquidation of the company next is powers and duties of a company liquidator it is mentioned under the section 290 to carry on the business of the company to do all acts and to execute all the activities of the company at the time of winding up to sell all the immovable and movable properties of the company to sell the whole of the undertaking to raise any money required for and to the company to institute or defend any suit against the company to invite and settle claim of creditors and contributors to inspect and records the returns of the company to prove rank and claim in the insolvency of any contributor to draw accept make and endorse any negotiable instruments to take out in his official name letters of administration to any deceased contributor to obtain any professional assistance to take all such actions steps or to sign execute and verify any paper of the company to apply to the tribunal for winding up of the company next is dissolution of company by tribunal after doing all the procedures of winding up the next is the dissolution or winding up of a company by tribunal when the affairs of the company have been completely wound up the company liquidator shall make an application to the tribunal for the dissolution of the company or winding up of the company it is mentioned under the section 302 subsection 1 next is the tribunal make an order that the company be dissolved from the date of the order and the company shall be dissolved accordingly after giving an application by the liquidator the tribunal makes an order that from the date of the order of the petition the company is wounded up a copy of the order within 30 days from the date to be forwarded by the liquidator to the registrar who record in the register of the company the copy of the winding up order should be given to the registrar within the 30 days and the registrar registers this in the company's records 
Next is, if the liquidator makes any default in forwarding a copy of the order within the specified period, that is within the 30 days, the liquidator shall be punishable with fine which may extend to rupees 5000 for every day during which the default continues. Next is secretary's duties in winding up by tribunal. The secretary assists the directors in preparing the petition to be given to the tribunal. He must file the copy of the petition to the registrar. He must submit the statement of affairs to the liquidator. He must give necessary information to the tribunal also. The last one is he should ensure that the word the company is under liquidation on every document and on every letter of the company. This is all about winding up of a company by tribunal. Hope you all like the video. Thank you for watching.